What I, what I want to do is I... What's I, he doing now? <laughs> what are you doing with your... Oh, that's oh, nice to do. Oh, that's... The, yeah. Well, hope we have a speaker there. Can you see us all right over there? Now they cool. can see. Oh, wait a minute. Look. <laughs> can I just say the best cookies? Save me some. I'll, I'm, I'm coming over later for some cookies. I, I, I spoke... I'll save you a cookie. <laughs> I've had enough of your cookies. <laughs> <laughs> the only chat anywhere, any Comic Con in the world, you'll see somebody do that. <laughs> so I was chatting to the Doctor Who guys yesterday, and each of us has a Doctor. Each of us has a has a kind of memory of Doctor Who when we were growing up. Mine was Tom Baker in the seventies. Uh, what was yours? I mean, you you moved to the states when you were about eight, or eight. Nine, weren't you? Yeah. Did yeah, you have yeah. any memories of Doctor Who before you went? Oh when yeah, you went? yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my first memory that I always go to about Doctor Who when I was a kid and still lived in Glasgow, and uh, it was, and this is, this is the irony of what happened to me with Doctor Who. Uh, the first episode I, that comes to mind, it was the Autons, uh, and I used to hide in my mother's coat when I was a little boy, younger than eight at the time. It was probably, I was probably about five or six at that time. And uh, it, the, this Autons, you all know the Autons, right? The original ones, the store mannequins, the fingers dropped and the gun came out, right? And they would, uh, they'd shoot you and attack you. I wouldn't walk past the storefront window with any mannequins in it. My mother had to hide me in her coat and walk me past. I was so scared. Cut to being cast many years later, but I'll get to the States bit cut to being cast many years later as Captain Jack and they told me the first episode what it was going to be and it was the Autons and that was my signal that I knew I was onto something that was going to be big it was going to be a success because that was the universe telling me it's coming now full circle because when we moved to the States I used to watch uh, John Pertwee was my first doctor uh, and Tom Baker then, obviously. And uh, uh, we used to watch it on PBS, which was the equivalent to like a BBC in the, the US. And it was on a Sunday night and they'd play from 10.30, it would be uh, Dave Allen at large, Monty Python, and then it would show Doctor Who and they would show it in a marathon, the full, all the episodes together. And I would stay up till about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning in my room, worst thing my parents ever did was give me a television in the bedroom. Um, and then I would wake up the next morning on a Monday having watched Doctor Who and I would fail every spelling test that I would go and take when I went to school on a Monday morning. And I blame Doctor Who that I am a shit speller. <laughs> Terrible. But that was, that's my kind of Doctor Who f memories as a kid. Was it a black and white telly? In, in my, my, in my room? Black and white. In Sorry, my we were a little bit oh. more posh. Horrible. I had a colored television set, horrible. but it was one that was built into the furniture. You know, it was like a piece of furniture in the room, and it was the size of like that sofa, and the screen was about that big. I'm not that fucking old. <laughs> Black and white. Yeah, I'm not far behind. <laughs> I'm not no, not I remember behind. here. I yeah, remember yeah. in the UK, you, you either could choose a black and white television yeah, or yeah. a color. Yeah. yeah, there wasn't many color three, then. Three channels, buttons, boom, yeah. boom, boom. Yeah. That was it. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. What about you, Gareth? Your experiences of doc the Doctor? Sylvester was my Doctor, and, and I, I, I was, you know, um, he was my first memory of, of Doctor Who, and, and then it came off air um, w w when I was a kid. So, um, but I remember Sylvester, I remember uh, Fancy and Bonnie Langford uh, when I was a kid. She was like one of my first, she was one of my first crushes. I'm going to tell her. Tell her, tell her, yeah, yeah tell her, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, so I've, I've, I've got a I've got, uh, huge love for S Sylvester. Um, whenever I see him, see him at a con. Yeah, you know what I love about these franchises, Star Wars, I'm a big for Star Wars Doctor Who fan. Yesterday, we did the Q&A with Doctor Who fans, and there was, there was some parents, but they had their little girls, or like four or five, six-year-old, and they were asking the questions, and you could see that the parents were passing on oh, yeah. what they had watched, and this is the type of franchise that will probably never die because we pass it on to our family, don't we? The big thing that I notice, because I do 
cons all over the world, and that's one of the things. The, the young people who watched, uh, when we started, I started in Who, but also with Torchwood, they're now grown an adult, and they have children of their own, and they're bringing their kids to the cons, and also some of them, there's third generation, because it's nans who bring, where are they? Nans who bring their kids, the, the grandkids, Nans who bring grandkids, and the grandkids have grown up, and the parents have also grown up, and you're absolutely right. The stories are stories that transcend generations, but also they never get old. They never get old, and there's a beauty to watching that, and it's something that a family can watch together. I think what Russell T did, though, but we kind of did have Doctor Who, then it ended, then Russell T Davis comes along and, and creates, it kind of remolds it to go forward, doesn't he? The, the sets, the, the costumes, everything, the narrative, and genius, really, in, in what he did to take it forward. Yeah, well, the, I mean, the genius of Russell being brought, being brought back to write Doctor Who, he originally was at, he wanted to come back in to begin with, and he wanted to write a show called Excalibur, which was Torchwood. BBC said, no, don't do that. If you revamp and recreate Doctor Who, then we will give you Excalibur, but <clears throat> then Excalibur became Torchwood, which for some people who still don't know, Torchwood is an anagram of Doctor Who, right? Now, who in the audience know, just figured that out for the first time? R look, right? Who, who, boom, right? Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what Russell is so good at, is taking something that is so solid, and then he spins it and creates this other world from it and Torchwood was born. I met him a few years back and I was saying this yesterday, not only is he he's a giant of a man, I mean he's a huge guy isn't he, but he's so, he's like a gentle giant, he's six foot four, six five or something, big bloke, but he's, 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 he's so passionate about his projects and what I loved about him was, if you look at Queer as Folk, he changed the way we watch telly when he brought that out, changed the way, didn't he really? Absolutely, yeah, no, no, he's, um, he, you know, he, he's, uh, the genius of Russell, I mean, you, you could talk about it for, for days, really, he, and he does. He, t he takes sort of um, uh, s something that's popular and turns it on its head. And, um, you know, it's, it's like a mirror to humanity, a lot of his shows. Um, and he, like, the relationship between Jack and Yanto, putting that, um, <coughs> putting a same-sex relationship at the forefront and not treating it as a thing, but just having it as something that just is. Um, you know, which changed everyone's attitudes and the, the amount of people that come up to the table and sort of say, oh, you know, that, you know uh, Jack and Yando's relationship helped me come out to my parents or accept who I was. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, they're, the, they're the nicest stories we, we hear. We do say it made people talk about things uh, more. Of, co of course it did, but it also, one of the best lines, and I can't remember it, it verbatim, but I remember it was written and Yanto was the one who said it because he was talking to his sister at his sister's flat, and it's always stuck with me. It was not, because she said, are you gay? And he went, no, I don't know. I don't know what, I, I, I'm paraphrasing here, but I don't know what I am, but I just know I love that man. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it, it's him, and, and it doesn't, you, you, you don't, there's no label for it. I'm just in love with somebody, and that's, you know, it's, it's not, you know, it doesn't need. It doesn't need a label. Nope. Love is love. Love is love. <laughs> so uh, I want to ask you, Gareth, about y your character when you first came into it, and and what what jumped off that page of the script when you saw that character, this kind of reserved guy but efficient and and, and kind of guy. What what characteristics did you bring out of that character? Well, I, I mean, he was just uh, the fir first scripts I got when I auditioned, he just had a couple of lines um, there was a bit of flirtation with uh, with with C C Captain Jack, but I, I've, I I thought very much he's like, he's number five on the cast list, he's probably gonna he's probably gonna uh, uh, die at some point soon um, <laughs> so, so, you know, it, it was fun you know, I, 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 I got quite a dry sense of humor myself and that's all it was at, at the time it was a reserve guy who had quite who gave sarcastic answers to things uh so when i started reading the scripts where the relationship between yanto and jack uh, progressed and uh i got cyber girl uh, that script through the door where, where the, ho the whole the, the whole episode was driven by yanto um it, it, it was both uh 
thrilling and terrifying uh, at the same time. Uh, Lisa, Lisa. Um, yeah, so I, I, I like to think Yan Yanto grew um, in, in, in an organic way between uh, what I brought to the role and what, what, what the writers were doing. I, I, I'd like to think that um, some of what I did in performance um, informed where the writers took the character. Um, and yeah, so it's been, you know, I'm, I'm still writing Yanto now for, for bit Big Finish. I've just done a three scripts and they, uh, it's been called the anthology because it sort of delves with sort of Yanto's past and his family and things like that and the fact that I'm still doing it now with with gray hair like <laughs> um, ye years after the uh, you know the character was killed off is is quite special did you find that the, obviously yourself as a person and an actor grew then uh, as well as you putting your input into the character on set well, definitely. You know, it was my first major TV role. I'd done bits in Casualty and whatnot before that. So, yeah, it, it, it um, helped me develop as an actor, as a, as a person. And it was a huge sort of uh, event in my life, which still, you know, it's, it's a gift that still gives now for me. I've seen, I've seen most of the world because of Torchwood, of traveling to cons, you know, all over America and things like that. So. Um, yeah, it was definitely a huge sort of event in my life that it really has uh, informed it and helped me grow and develop as a person and an actor. Yanto was basically the glue that kept everybody together in Torchwood. I mean, they, although characters are, you know, different levels and you've got the, the main character and da-da-da-da-da, but if you look at it in the storytelling of the whole thing, everybody else was chaotic. And Yanto was the one who kept everybody together and the joke was it was about coffee. Right? It was all about coffee. However, it was keeping everything in that cup together and the coffee and the milk and the cream and the sugar, everything together to make that great cup of coffee and Torchwood was the great cup of coffee. So there's a little metaphor. When, when, yeah. when did you guys sort of get the idea that it, that it was a hit? Because with something like that, you know, with, a, with being out on stage, you can see by the audience. Well, the difference but, the, with live audiences, you, can, you only know it's a hit when the, you see the audience is full, right? and you get immediate reaction. With television, it, it, it either is immediate or it takes a year or so to build it. However, and a lot of people forget this, Torchwood was one of the shows, and myself, Gareth, Naoko, Byrne, and Eve were five of the people who helped build BBC Three. Because we came, we came on BBC Three, and it was the highest ratings even more so than some shows we're getting on BBC One and BBC Two. And uh, there was a, pr I remember we were up against the first time a premier football game. Do you remember this? Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, you're going to do crap. It's going to be terrible ratings. The, the game's going to take it, da, da 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 We actually held our own and I think we beat the football game. So B the BBC were like, oh my God. So we were the precursors for BBC Three. Then when we moved and the, the show continued to get better, we kind of knew we were onto something really good. And there was never any, uh, any spin-off of Doctor Who uh, had never worked before, except uh, I'm not sure, Sarah Jane Adventures, I don't think were out yet. Were they or they had already been out? You guys can figure it out, but you know what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to make here. Um, the only other spin-off was one for K9 years ago, which tanked. So we knew there was a risk to what we were doing. However, there was something good about it. We knew it was a bit of a hit, and then they moved us to BBC Two because the ratings were so good, and we did phenomenal on there. And then it was so good on BBC Two, we then were put onto BBC One. But each time we moved from each channel, we had to change a little bit because it was a different feel for each of the different uh, networks on, you know, on I say the channels on BBC. So if anything, Torchwood was probably one of the. It was a chameleon. It was a success. And then they took it to the States and it, helped, it was done on a, a network in America. So we basically became this kind of worldwide product brand before Doctor Who hit in its success in the rest of the world. Do you Just saying. <laughs> we were a gateway drug. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So do, do you keep a track of Doctor Who now, Nasuti Gatwa, that, that uh, you know, reincarnation again? I mean, tremendous actor. I mean, him in Sex Education. Has anyone seen Nasuti in Sex Education? What an actor. I mean, a tremendous actor. Yeah, I, I still keep up with what's going on because you have to. When you're doing conventions and you've got the fan base who are 
uh, so involved in it. And, you know, I'm a fan of the show myself. I have to be honest, I haven't sat down and watched uh, uh, the ep those episodes yet. I've only seen some of the uh, specials that were on. However, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an in... The one thing that I've always said, because everybody... I remember when David came in, everyone said, oh, my God, he's too young. He's not going to play this. Nah, 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 nah. And it was all the negativity. And then as soon as he came on, people fell in love with him. And I used to say, because I'd you know, done it with Christopher, uh, Doctor Who with Christopher for a little while, we don't go on because of who's playing the doctor. We go because of the journey and the stories and the, the, the ride that it takes you on and the, the kind of lessons that you learn from the doctor and the companions. So, you know, all the griping about who it is and what's changing and why and meh, 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 it's gonna happen. And the people who gripe like that, they don't really watch the show. They just wanna gripe. So when they do watch it, they fall and people do fall in love with it, you go on that journey and that's the beauty. We go there because we wanna go on the TARDIS. I mean, I guess it's like theatre, you know, the like reintroduction of like Sunset Boulevard and, and all these shows, Oklahoma, that have reinvented themselves for a modern audience, isn't it, really? Yeah, but sometimes don't try to reinvent the wheel. No, you know what I'm saying? Right. We're not reinventing Doctor Who. It's just characters are changing. That's different. And when some theatre shows, I think, go too far to change something, I'm not pointing any fingers, but it, yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Um... I've got another question here. Uh, Gareth. <laughs> we could have a chat about that later. Uh, Gareth, I want to get to your favourite memories of, of being on set or on a programme like Torchwood as an actor, the challenges that you faced, and, and your favourite memories of that series. Uh, at, at the t like I said, it was my first big, big job, and I didn't realise at the time how, how, how lucky um, we were. Um, speaking to other actors who were in other shows, like... Uh, I'm sure he won't mind me saying, but James Masters came over uh, for, for season two, and he said, "You guys, you, you get you get on so well." He said, "It's really rare," and I, because it's the only show I ever did, I didn't know that that um, it's rare for for a cast to uh, get, get like each other so much and get get on so well. Literally, we, we like we had it. We had a really really good bond and family atmosphere on set, and it was, it was um, actors like James who sort of said, this is rare, you know, B Buffy was great, obviously, but he said not all the actors got on. People, people, some people let lunch alone in their trailers because they didn't go on with other, other actors, and that, that was quite a common thing, which I didn't know anything about because Torchwood was my only show, so I, I didn't, I didn't um, I, I've become more appreciative now of how uh, lucky I was to be to be part of that cast and the, the 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 memories of being on set with everyone. When everyone was on set, they were the re they were the really the best days. Um, they were long days. We we all worked really hard. But having this man as our patriarch made a huge uh, difference. When everybody's energy levels were down and the, like the the uh, ninth ten hour hour of the day, um, this man would always raise our spirits and make us laugh and give us the energy we needed to f to, to to finish the day. Um, so you know we were lucky. So uh, my favourite memories were the days we, we we were all on set and especially when John was there to 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 pick us up when things got tiring. Yes, even putting an eyeball in my butthole. <laughs> it came it came up yesterday. The uh, the uh, what was it the, the eye of the, the token. The what? The Dogen Eye? The Dogen Eye, yes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> the eye is watching you. <laughs> it <Anyway>. sure is. <laughs> luckily, didn't bring me four, damn. Uh, luckily, I didn't have to touch that prop. <laughs> it was burning Naoko. Yeah. Can we... I'm going to throw the audience up to some questions now from uh, this wonderful audience out here. There's plenty of questions to get through today. Uh, if you just go to that gentleman up the top there, just that there. Way. Yeah, that go way. up the back there, yeah. Go up the back. Am I going here? Hi. Hello. Um, Hi, Sammy. <laughs> Hi, Gareth. Um, Gareth, there's a question you like you get asked all the time, and I know you hate it. So I'm going to ask it to John. What's it like kissing Gareth? <laughs> Don't. <laughs> no pressure. Contrary to, uh, I, I, 
I, en- I enjoyed kissing Gareth. It was not because, and listen, and I, he'll reiterate this. I remember having the conversation with him the first time I had to do it, and I think you were laying in the water. It was the first time I brought you back to... That's right, Cybergo. Yeah, yeah Cybergo. I brought him back to life by kissing him. And we had a conversation before it, which I do with everybody that I kiss on a set long before they have intimacy coaches, coaches even in the musical theater, in musical theater world. Do you mind if I stick my tongue in? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I, Because I, my thing is I always want it to look real. I don't want it to look like... Nobody kisses like that. So I would, you know, going back to musicals, anything, I'm time I'm kissing, I would always discuss it, how to make it look real. And I would joke, I'd say, I'm not going to, no tongues, but open mouth to make it look real, right? And also, again, going back to that fact, we all got along with each other. We all trusted each other. You have to have an element of trust, an element of fun when you're doing that. And it was, it was great. So the first kiss, you know, I was, I'm older than Gareth. And he was younger than he was. I'd still kiss him now, but yeah, what are you trying to say? <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is, it was it was he, he it was, was hot when he was younger, it, so it was no, easier. He's, it, but well, but it was two hot guys, a younger, older, you know, relationship kind of thing, and we didn't know at that time that the relationship was going to develop the way it was, no, right? Yeah. And it was great, yeah. So uh, without going into too much detail, I really enjoyed kissing Gareth. <laughs> Yeah, cool. and he's a good kisser. Yeah, so there you go. God, you're so right. Piss off, no. <laughs> uh, many franchises are rebooting as musicals. When can we get Torch with the musical? Uh, no. <laughs> no. no. Gareth can sing. I can sing, but... Burn can rap. Burn can and Naoko can sing, but Eve, I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> Eve don't think so. Yeah, yeah. Eve, Eve had a musical char- musical theater character called Pamela, and uh, yeah, you, you, you don't want to hear Eve sing. No, really. When I was young, <laughs> that's how she starts it. Yeah, Eve. Anyway, Eve just takes off her shoes and hums. Yeah. Oh God. No, be. <laughs> That joke. Talk back, talk back. So yeah, hello. I don't think it's on. It is on. Okay. Hello, my name's George. My question is: Has anything strange happened on stage while while you were filming? Strange as in something going wrong or oh. something silly. All, all the all, time. All the time. Can you think of anything off the top of your head? God, no, I mean, it's the, uh, every day, this is something went wrong. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what you guys see on, on, on the TV are, are, are the good takes. <laughs> it's like, um, uh, along with uh, good takes, there's a lot of bad takes, and not, not necessarily to do with, with acting, but technical stuff, lighting, um, people fluffing lines. Like, like, like the, the one, the, the, it wasn't necessarily you or I, but I remember Naoko came in and she had to hit a, a, day, a day player, an actor who was playing a small part. She had to come in and hit him with a golf club. And she came in, she was shown how to do it by the stunt person. But she actually came in and she whacked and she freaking hit the guy in the back of the head with the golf club. And he, he continued to do the scene and he collapsed and did all this stuff. <laughs> and then they went cut and he went, and she went, oh my God, are you okay? And he like, yeah, you actually fucking whacked me in the head. And it was a real golf club. Things like that. I came through a door once in Cyber, <laughs> Cyber Girl. It was a... You a, went to open the door and the whole, the whole wall of the set <laughs> like fell, fell down. And I said, no, you had to kick the door in. He kicked, he kicked the door. <laughs> but it was a, a grade two listed <laughs> yeah. building. Yeah, yeah. But the whole wall just went... <laughs> and I went, oops. And then they, they had to pay to have that wall rebuilt. So, so stuff like that happened. Then there were t- you know, we'd do a driving scene where we'd just get stupid yeah. and start laughing. Yeah, I've, 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 just done, um, I've just done a script about the SUV. Oh, uh, I love the SUV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, do you know what? I'm, I, I've said that now. I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm thinking confidentiality, and I shouldn't really give any spoilers. Don't. But yeah, yeah. But okay. But there, there, yeah. So it's, it's, there are callbacks in... In, in that script to our fun in the SUV. Um, 
But yeah, we, I, mean, I can't like, wait. Like I said, really long, really long days, um, and you have to you, you have to have fun as well. Otherwise, what what was the point? And the energy is low. You have to have fun when you're doing it. Um, and yeah, Naoko in those shoes, heels. Oh, never, ever, <laughs> ever. If anybody, if you ever do, work with Naoko Mori, and she had to wear high heels. Don't ask her to run. She cannot run, and I can run faster in high heels than she can. And she, it used to take her age. We'd be like, can you hurry up? And they eventually then would shoot her with the shoes off, put trainers on her. She'd run, and then at the end of the sequence, put the high heels back on her. Yeah, anyway, so those are the kind of stupid things. Sorry. Hi, Hi boys. You all right? Um, thank, I'm just going to say thank you for... me. Uh, doing that on like Torchwood with you two so I could find my boyfriend and that. You've very helped me. And I just want to say, do you remember the naked hide and seek I think it was? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's my favorite scene. And this one let me watch it when I was about six maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say what was your two favorite scenes together? Uh, can I tell the one about the leg? Yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> go for it, yeah go for it. Yeah. So it was, I think that might have been the naked hide and seek it was. bit. Uh, and also, we were in this kind of, um, uh, I'll go over here. We were in this, uh, gr like, gre a room, uh, what do you call it, a greenhouse. Hot house, yeah. A hot house. And we had to do this scene where we were making out, right? And again, we want to make it look real. So we had discussed what we were going to do. And my apologies, but good luck explaining this to the kids on the way home. Um, we were standing, and Gareth's trousers were undone, and I had my hand on his leg, right? And we were supposed to be interrupted by Eve, Gwen walking in. And so we would do, ready, action, and I had my hand down rubbing his leg, and da 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 da, -da and we're, ma we're making out, and we're in it, and Eve walks in a couple times, she all of a sudden, she, goes, <laughs> she just started laughing, right? And he and I are like, <laughs> funny the first time, right? So she goes, I wish, uh, cut, do it again, do it again. So I'm going, da 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 da, kiss, 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 rub, 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 kiss, kiss, arm down the leg. Eve walks in again, she's, <laughs> turn around, and he and I are like, come on, really? Do it again, cut, cut, cut. She comes in, da da, starts the line, da da, she giggles again, and I look at Gareth, and, and we, they go, cut, and I go, Gareth, I'm so sorry. I said, I'm sorry about rubbing your legs, so, and he goes, <laughs> not my leg. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I remember there was one of those takes. For, yeah, she, she, she was laughing, but there was one like uh, they, they were rolling, and like it's like uh, we were making out, and we're like uh, in my mind, I was like, I'm sure she should have walked in by now. Yeah, so it was, just kept going. So, yeah, so we, so we were going for ages, and I was like, so, so we, I just looked to the side, and she was literally just looking through the window like this, <laughs> like creeping <laughs> on us. <laughs> like, really, really <laughs> creepy. I didn't complain. <laughs> Gareth's going, can we hurry up? Where is she? Anyway, we've got another question just at the front here. Hi, I'm Emma. I met, I met the other one. This is my question. How did you first meet in Torchwood? How did we first meet in Torchwood? As individuals or as the character? As John and Gareth? Well, we met on really one of the first days of filming. Yeah, well, I came, I came in. You, you guys had done some scenes, and I was. I, it was about um, the third or fourth day that I, I came in. So I felt a bit, bit of a fish out of water. Because the new boy. Yeah, I, I felt like the newbie. They, 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 uh, John had already made friends with everyone, and they, they, or, they uh, you already walked it onto set feeling there was like a family atmosphere. So I felt a bit, a bit like an outsider. But it was a very short. Uh, period of time before I felt like uh, part of the family because they were so welcoming and gracious and lovely and you know um, so f by the end of my first day um, I felt like I'd been completely integrated into the tortured family it was lovely we'd all made out with them by the end of that afternoon yeah absolutely <laughs> that was the introduction <laughs> we're gonna have one more question oh where should we go right at the top yeah go up the, the back up the back Oh, hey. Hello. Oh, um, my name is Zoe Brown. I'm from uh, the northeast of England, cold Wickham in Gateshead. But what is your favorite companion from one of the Doctor Who series? 
Well, of course, I'm just going to say myself. <laughs> That's an easy answer for me, but also one of my favorite, uh, because I think every companion has a little piece of this companion in them, and it is a representation of how strong a companion is, how uh, uh, individually minded a companion is, how uh, loving a companion is, how fun a companion is, and also how uh, much a companion is there to help and assist the doctor. And every companion, whoever, every person who plays a companion needs to have a little bit of Sarah Jane Smith in them. Yep. Absolutely. Bonnie Langford. <laughs> I'm so seriously going to tell her. She'll love that. I'm Give sorry, I, I could only see Bonnie Langford on Just Williams. Sorry, <laughs> just say, if anyone's old enough to remember that. <laughs> I was photographed oh. years ago when I first came to London. Uh, Bonnie uh, and I hung out together quite a bit. And I remember, I, I think it was like at an Olivier Awards or something, I was under the table with her. Don't ask why, I don't know why. But uh, we were under the table together, just being stupid. We, were, we, weren't, we were like in our early 20s and just being ridiculous. So she was good fun. Nice. She still is. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you appreciate it. It's been wonderful having these guys here this weekend in the Northeast, hasn't it? Show your appreciation for the wonderful Mr. John Barrowman and Gareth David Thank Lloyd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.